A while ago, I replied to a tweet from Rizzo where he talked about how his new YouTube video looked to have low bitrate. He'd not changed anything in his recording settings, but the video was still pixelating a lot post-upload. Now, I'm surprised not more people know about this, so I want to explain what determines your video quality on YouTube and teach you a little inside trick. I want to show you how, even as a small creator with a new channel, you can get your videos to look a hundred times better and have the same quality as massive creators on this platform. If you're simply looking for the answer as to how to get your videos properly processed and compressed as little as possible by YouTube, assuming you're attempting to upload a 1080p mp4 video, small channels need to render in 2560 by 1440 pixels instead, while bigger channels just need to be a little more patient and allow YouTube some more time to process their video. No matter which category you belong in, you need to wait and check if your video is fully processed, even if it looks to be in full 1080p, because this is often not the case. Now, if this is confusing, I don't blame you. I suggest you watch the rest of the video to get a better understanding of the why behind all of this. I'll try to give an explanation of which category you belong in here in a bit, and I'll show you the trick to check everything. But before that, you need to know what determines proper processing on YouTube. All of this comes down to one thing, and that's called VP9. Now, if you don't know what this is, VP9 is a video codec, essentially a piece of software that YouTube utilizes to compress videos. They compress the videos we upload in order to ensure faster load times on this site, because as one can imagine, faster load times retains more users, essentially making them more money. Rocket League is a fast-paced game with a lot of motion in the imagery when you record it, and VP9 is needed to ensure that your videos on here don't look as if you rendered it with 3000 bitrate, for example, when you actually rendered it with 40,000. A video can seem as if it's processed in 1080p after upload, which in a sense is true, but there's a big difference between a 1080p video on YouTube with the standard AVC1 codec that small channels get, and then the golden VP9 codec that we want to achieve. And although the visual difference is very significant and noticeable, not many people seem to realize that this is a thing when they start a new channel. If you upload a video to YouTube and see the quality is terrible, even though it's fine on your own computer, just know that there's a way and please don't be discouraged by it. So how do you check if your video has been properly processed? The way to check if a video has been processed with the VP9 codec is actually really simple. So you just go to video or you can even try it on this one. You right click on it and you choose stats for nerds. This will open a little like overlay window that has a line called codex. And if a video has been properly processed, it will say VP09 on that line and not AVC1. So now that you know what VP9 is, it's time to talk about how you actually achieve it. So the reason I mentioned smaller and bigger channels earlier is due to the fact that the VP9 codec is usually reserved, if you will, for bigger creators on the platform. I'm assuming, and this is just a guess for me, that it makes more sense for YouTube given they may have more costs involved with VP9 processing, I don't know. Maybe they want to ensure that priority goes to channels where they know that a safe amount of viewers will tune in on an upload ensuring that they get their return on investment. Now, I'm not too technical in that regard, so I can't be sure. As a brand new creator on the platform, you can still get it. I will explain it just following this. YouTube processes a video by many steps, and it's in this chain of processing, if you will, that I see a lot of people misunderstand when a video is actually fully processed. So when you finish your video and you're ready to upload it, you press the render button and you upload it. And then YouTube starts to process it. And if you wait a little bit, you'll see that your video will be processed up to 1080p. Everything looks to be done right, but there's an extra step that people often overlook, I feel like. So after all of this, VP9 processing actually only starts here. So your video looks to be processed in 1080p, but it hasn't gotten the right codec yet. So the video will still be pixelating a lot. So what happened in Rizzo's case that I mentioned at the beginning of the video and what I've seen several other pro players do is that they upload on step 3 instead of keeping the video unlisted for a little while until point 4 is complete. See, this is all that bigger creators have to do. Be a little more patient and ensure that the VP9 codec has taken effect on the video and set it live after that. And it's simply just like checking the unlisted video by right clicking on it and choosing stats for nerds on the video as I talked about earlier. In my experience, the fourth step here is very inconsistent and I've seen three to five minute uploads getting the VP9 codec after both 30 minutes and 48 hours even. So you need to be a little more patient and upload ahead of time. All right, meanwhile, smaller channels need to take advantage of a little workaround here. Instead of rendering at 1080p, you need to set your export settings to 2560 by 1440, which is essentially faking 1440p by upscaling the video. 
Now, the downsides to this are that your render will take a little bit longer and the processing by YouTube usually takes a little longer as well, given there are essentially more pixels for them to process. Although they are stretched doing the upscaling in the export. But for whatever reason, YouTube needs the VP9 codec to properly process 1440p. And because of this, or as a following of this, the codec will be applied to all formats below it actually. So this is including 1080p. This means that instead of 1080p having the codec of AVC1, you will have the VP9 now. So where is the line between small and big channels when it comes to VP9 processing? The truth is, I don't actually really know. If you look at my channel's past, you'll see that I found out about all of this a year ago, and the sixth video I uploaded is upscaled to 1440p. Now, what's funny about that is, apparently YouTube also looks at and gives the VP9 codec to older videos if they get enough views. Because of the five prior videos I had uploaded, the four with the most views, even though they were uploaded in a standard 1080p, actually got VP9 later on. When I don't really know exactly, I had not really paid attention to that because I didn't think that was a thing. I only just realized it when I wanted to make a video about this. So everything seems a little inconsistent and the only way for you to know if your channel is big enough for you to stop exporting 1440 and start exporting in the standard 1080 is to try and upload an unlisted 1080 test video, wait for 24 hours and then see if it gets the correct codec after that. Though I would estimate it's in between your channel having around five to 10,000 subscribers maybe. I don't think there's a set number and for research I haven't been able to find anything. All right, so to sum it all up, quality of Rocket League videos on YouTube is highly dependent on having been processed with a VP9 codec. The only way for small channels to get it from the get-go of an upload is to export the video in 1440p. Whether you have a big channel that always gets VP9 or small channel uploading 1440p videos, you need to allow YouTube an inconsistent amount of time to process with the correct codec. And finally, you need to upload ahead of time and check that the codec on your unlisted video is correct before releasing it as a public upload. This is not necessarily only for Rocket League. If you want to make videos in any other game with fast moving imagery, you will benefit a ton from this. I hope that this helps just like one person out there who's trying to create high quality Rocket League content and might have been stopped in the process of it all because of YouTube's weird processing for smaller channels. And uh, yeah, I'd be over the moon if that happened. I want to drop a quick thanks for allowing me to create different content to car design videos and always having my back and supporting me and everything I do. I really appreciate it. I really enjoy making this sort of stuff like sharing knowledge that will be to the benefit of others. And it doesn't really matter if it's 1v1 gameplay or, or videos like this one. So yeah, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a lovely day and uh, peace.